All right, so welcome guys to Simple Machines Part 1 uh, as part of the Engineering Principles course on Learn.io. Today we're going to be learning about levers, wheel and axles, and pulleys, the first three types of simple machines. So let's first talk about levers. So for this we're going to have to keep in mind torque, which was something that we learned earlier uh, in the Simple Physics unit. So let's look here at the lever that we have set up. So we have a four meter long lever that splits in the middle by its fulcrum. We have a force pushing downwards on the right that's two meters away from said fulcrum. And we have a box that has a that's applying a force of gravity of 10 newtons straight down one meter away on the other side of the fulcrum. So the problem is asking us how much force we are applying to keep this whole system in equilibrium. Uh, and for that, we're gonna have to use torques. So we need to first find out how much torque is this thing on the left applying. Uh, so its force is 10 newtons and the distance is one meter. So if tau or torque equals R cross F, uh, we know that the force is perpendicular, so we know that that works out. R is 1 meter times 10 newtons gives us a torque of 10 newton meters. Uh, and if you don't quite understand how we got that, I recommend looking at our torque video once again. Uh, I just want to add one thing that I think I forgot to mention during that video, and that's that torque actually stays in newton meters. You might remember that work we convert to joules because joules is the same as newton meters, but in for when we're talking about torque, we actually keep it in newton meters because it's not talking about energy. It's talking about forces. Um, this is a little easier to understand if you look at the full complicated equation for torque, which is RF sine theta. Um, we got rid of, uh, so when you do the unit conversion on that, it comes up with newton meters per radians. Since radians isn't a proper unit, uh, it's a weird way to say that, but it's not considered a proper unit, it's not a physical unit, we don't usually include it when we're writing our units, so we just write newton meters. I didn't really get into sine, theta, or radians because that's something that you learn in geometry and then later on in pre-calculus in high school. Um, it's a little more complicated uh, math-wise, so we just simplified it down to R cross F, because so long as the force is perpendicular, um, the math works out. But anyway, so now that we know that the left side is exerting 10 newton meters of torque, we can figure out the force on the right. We know that 10 newton meters equals R cross F, our R, is 2 meters. So if we divide 10 newton meters by 2 meters, we get 5 newtons is our force. And as you can see, 5 newtons is half the amount of force that's being applied on the other side of the lever. And that's basically how levers work. That's how they give us mechanical advantage. The further away you are from the fulcrum, the more torque you're providing with the same amount of force. So if you have a long enough lever, theoretically, you could lift anything. So in this, for, in this example, for example, um, that was strange. In this case, for example, our lever has a mechanical advantage of MA is two to one, since our force output our force input is being doubled on the other side. So let's move on to wheel and axles. These are somewhat similar, although they look a lot different. So let's say we have a system of one wheel on the outside, it's very big, it's five meters away from the center of rotation, and a smaller wheel on the inside that's only 0.1 meter. Oh, did I say five meters? I think I meant half a meter. Um, and we have a smaller wheel on the inside that's only 0.1 meters away from the center of rotation. Uh, think of maybe a steering wheel on a car. So when you try to spin the steering wheel, what's resisting 
the rotation? Well, it's the wheels on the car. The friction between the wheels and the ground prevents them from rotating, which in turn prevents the steering wheel from rotating. So if we were just trying to physically force the wheels to turn, it's very hard to get enough force to do that. As we see here, it takes 100 newtons. Um, it would take 100 newtons to be able to rotate those wheels. That's how much resistance they're providing. So in this case, we can again uh, look at the torques in order to figure out how much force we have to provide to rotate that 100 newtons. So we have, and I'll just paste this so I get the right fonts, a torque, I'll use T since I don't have tau, equals uh, 0.1 meters times 100 newtons, which gives us a torque of uh, 0.1 times 100, so that's actually just 100 divided by 10, 10 newtons of torque being provided right here in the middle. So how much torque do we have to provide to counter that? 10 newtons. So if we just copy our 10 newtons, copy our 10 newtons uh, equals our r cross f in this case r is 0.5 meters cross f so if we divide 10 newtons by 0.5 so that's just multiplying it by 2 we get 20 newtons as our force so we just cut the amount of force that we needed to rotate this wheel by five, by a factor of five. We went from needing 100 newtons to rotate it to 20. So the mechanical advantage on this wheel then, ma equals five to one. For every one newton that we're putting in, we get five newtons out. And that's how a wheel and axle works. The larger your wheel is, assuming that you're actually rotating the wheel, the more mechanical advantage you get. And now let's look at pulleys. I saved this for last just because pulleys are a lot more complicated. Um, and while we will go into the math for the other two in the advanced course, uh, we're only going to skim the surface level of the math, uh, both in this course and in the advanced version. So when you're looking at the mechanical advantage of a pulley and how it works, uh, the way that you're taught to calculate its mechanical advantage is just to count how many strings are going in the opposite direction to your uh, resistance force or the object that you're trying to lift. So in this case, for example, we have a box that has a weight, or sorry, that has a force of gravity of 10 newtons going downwards. Uh, we see that this pulley has two strings, one right here and one over here, which we're actually gonna be pulling on. And that means that we have two strings, our mechanical advantage is two to one. Since we know our mechanical advantage is two to one, we then know that for every one newton we put in, we'll get two out. So 10 newtons divided by two gives us our force is five newtons. Now, to go a little more in depth about IMA and AMA, uh, ideal mechanical advantage and actual mechanical advantage about this, uh, we will be doing that a little more in the advanced course, but for now, I hope this gives you just a basic understanding of how pulleys, wheels and axles, and especially levers do what they do and give us so much help in our day-to-day -day tasks. Thank you.